It's a rubbish collection day today, so that's going to be a bit of background noise. I apologize for that. Um, so I've been watching a bit of a tutorials on YouTube on throwing and just pottery in general. And I figured, why not do a kind of, I guess, live um, learning from a tutorial? Uh, so I'll find a collection of tutorials where I really enjoy and um, just go through them step by step and kind of like see if I can learn the techniques. Um, I think that way I can break it down into more manageable sections instead of watching a whole tutorial and then just try and do whatever the technique is. Um, it's probably better if I watch it, do one step, stop, watch it, do one step, stop. And I thought I'll make a video out of it. This is something that I want to do on a regular basis and um, it could basically be a series of videos on YouTube and I don't have a name for it yet. So if anyone's got a suggestion for the name for this series, do leave a comment below and give me some ideas. So this video is a demonstration by Dan Derma and the video is from so it's Orchard Valley Ceramic Arts Guild on YouTube. They have a lot of like old school um, demonstration, which is really good. And there are a lot of like very, I guess, technique based potters who do demonstrations on various. The whole video actually talks about um, modifying the room and stuff like that and making multiple bowls that nest into each other. But today I just want to focus more on the bowl throwing technique. All right, let's give this a go. Okay, this is about two and a half, so 2.2 kilos, which is five pounds. This clay is also quite dry. So to, to open up a large piece of clay, if it's well centered and it's been lowered and the clay is a little bit softer, you should be able to hold on to a sponge, no pressure on the outside of the clay, Get yourself positioned just to the right of center, like from here to here. And you're pressing down and in and leaning on the interior wall. So I'm using my sponge and my uh, ring finger against the sponge to lean on that interior wall and open up a deep well. You guys see that? The key to opening up good bowls uh, is that the deepest spot is gonna be at the center and that even when you're opening, there's a gradual curve happening. So the bottom is getting thicker and thicker as it heads toward the walls. Um, and that will make sure that you can get a good curve later on. So as I'm opening it up, I'm still only touching the inside. I'm gonna push the clay out toward three o'clock and my sponge is moving slowly up the side as I head outward. So that this clay is thicker than this on the bottom. All right, so compress, compress, compress. And if you're not sure if you have a good curve at this point in the bottom to make your biggest bowl, right? We're working on the biggest bowl of our bowl set right now. You can actually take the rib at this point and check your curve, right? Put it in here. So I'm gonna focus more on the opening part. Um, while I was watching, I was just trying to change his shape a little bit just to match what he's got. He's got a very like straight side, which I guess that's another thing I'm struggling with. Let's try to get that nice and straight. Uh, but I think this is the right shape. So we're gonna open that with the sponge, like you said. And I have been doing this where instead of opening straight down the middle, you do it slightly to the right, um, because I've watched this earlier and I've adopted that part. And I do think it's very, a really good tip to have. Straight down. So it's going down, so two hands. Slightly to the right against the interior wall. And then as I'm opening, I'm also slowly raising it. Actually there is an air bubble right there. If you're not sure if you have a good curve at this point in the bottom, you can actually take the rib at this point and Check your curve, right? Put it in here and make a nice curve. All right, so I need to work on my curve so it's definitely not as nice as his.
All right, it's not as smooth as his, but I think that's a pretty good start. Um, and the way I teach bowl making is that my goal, my next goal after establishing a good curve is to throw a pot that is shaped like a flower pot. So I want to move as much clay up as possible with very straight supported walls, compressed, get it all thinned up and out. Don't get the rim too thin because the rim is going to have to stretch and stretch and stretch, but to get most of the clay up. Um, and so my next move is to sort of get that clay moving upwards. I'm going to just do kind of, I call this clay repositioning in a way. The first pull, if you start in with a bigger piece of clay and you say, oh, I don't pull with a sponge, I pull with my fingertips and I'm just going to get in here and pull, it's really hard. Thick clay is really hard to pull up with just your fingertips. It's way easier if you do something like use the side of your finger, maybe both sides like this. So I teach this one a lot. Um, use the side of your index finger on the inside, back it up with your other finger if you need to, curve fingers for strength. Back this one up with the sponge along your index finger and go in and grab the reins, keep them together and just sort of maneuver some clay. Doesn't have to be a huge first pull, but you have to get that clay moving. See how straight his um, side wall is? I think that's gonna be a problem here. So, use curved fingers. So I think my bowl is to, to um, open up. And maybe that's what the issue is. Because I think that's gonna be better. Um, so before I go to the next step, I'm just going to get the curves nice first. So curve fingers on the inside like that, and then on the outside like that, using the sponge. And then just pushing straight up. So no fingertips. I keep using fingertips because of the shape. So maybe. So don't film the rim too much. And I'm gonna compress that. I mean, that's not bad from that angle. Um, it still feels like it's a little bit more open compared to his. Like the side is so straight. God, it looks so clean. Maybe my sponge is too dirty. Right. I think that's a bit better. I mean, I guess the shape doesn't have to be exactly the same. It's more about the technique. So let's keep going. All right, I'm pushing in. And I'm grabbing on some clay and I'm coming up. And I'm lessening my pressure as I get to the top because I don't want to get this too thin up here, about half an inch for a bigger bowl. And I don't want to go below that while I'm still pulling up clay. All right, so the second pull looks like it's a similar thing. Um, so my rim is already about half an inch, which is a centimeter. So I need to focus more on what's going on at the bottom. So I need to grab, it looks like he grabbed a lot of clay down here. And gone up with it. And then lessen the pressure towards the rim. Didn't get the same amount of height, but I think that's that's the idea. Let me compress the room. Moisten and mop, and then pull. Moisten. So I'm still in the flower pot making stage. Fingertips to fingertips. I'm gonna let the clay widen as I pull up and then lessen up my pressure as I come up here. Wait, does it have a sponge? 
little bits of something in there. Yeah, still Who using knows. a sponge on the outside. It's not, not too bad. This is the flower pot shape I'm looking for. Let's get to that shape first before I watch the next step. So, moisten the mop. I feel like I've kind of lost my curve on the inside. Um, it's no longer a continuous curve. I feel like I've got too much clay down at the base, maybe? Maybe I'll... That looks more like what Dan's got. All right, so we'll stop there and let's keep watching. What I want to do is cant it outward a few times. So I want it to go from here to here to here. And then once I get the diameter I want, which is going to be somewhere around 12 inches, and I'll know it when I get there because my bat is 12 inches so I can visualize so where the rim is. Once I'm out there, then I can look at putting the curve in. Okay. So how to get it to cant outward. Um, another little skill that I think is worthwhile having um, is using two ribs together, one on the inside of the pot and one on the outside. So I am cleaning a curved rib and a straight rib. You're going to use the curved rib on the inside because you don't want to make any marks as you're pressing the clay outward. And you're going to use the straight rib on the outside because you want to keep the pot supported and canting outward but compressed and going against a very, very straight line. So part of what you get out of doing this is you get to use more of your clay to make the bowl. Um, it gets bigger uh, for the amount of clay you're using. And it's supported the whole way because we're not putting the curve in until the end. And usually it's the curve, especially at the bottom, that gets you into trouble, right? Um, okay, so here's what we're doing. We're going to hold the ribs flush to the pot. They're not going straight on like this. They're going like this. And this one is slightly ahead. The sweet spot for where this is going to press out is going to be just shy of the edge of this rib, like this. So here we go. I'm pressing outwards. Wait until I meet up with the rib. There we go. And then slowly edge up and out. And then move them together. So I'm going to do a couple of passes. One more. Strong outside rib, doesn't move, solid as a rock. Inside rib is pushing the clay outward into the outside rib and is stretching the clay outward in a very supported fashion along the edge of the rib. All right, so I don't have the same ribs, um, which may or may not be an issue. I do have, so you're saying that the red's gonna be too soft. I do have this. And I do have, which could work, or I do have this guy as well. The curve is not that strong, um, but I think I'll just have to compromise. So the way he holds the rib, I think it's instead of straight like this, it's more like at an angle. Um, and outside rib is for support and inside rib push outwards. Okay. Let's give that a try. Mine's definitely not wide enough yet because 12 inch will be the bat. So I guess we just keep going until we get to the 12 inch mark, um, which is 30 centimeter. I made a platter recently that's um, exactly the size of the bat. And it was like all the way to the edge and I had to figure out how big that is. I may just compress the rim so it looks a bit messy. So my rim is still pretty, it's about 
under a centimeter, maybe seven mil. Um, all right. So straight bit on the outside, leaving a little bit of room. There's a bit of sponge on my roof as well. And I'll push the outside, I mean the inside out until they meet and then stretch the clay out and up my wheel is going very fast and that's a worry so that's pretty close it's going a bit off center and i wonder why i feel like my base is not as wide it needs, like it needs to be wider because it feels like it's a lot of overhang and the pot kind of wants to fall down like I think I should go taller instead of just straight up um, I'm a bit worried about trying one more pull maybe I'll leave it maybe I'll leave it because I think the next step is to widen the bottom start all the way at the bottom press out into the rib give it time to stretch yeah, Usually I am slowing the wheel down too when I'm doing this and each pass I will slow the wheel just a little bit. Um, so I think this is out now at the what feels like the right dimension to me and we have done it in a couple three passes. The clay is stretched thinner, it is still supported, it is still on center and it is now asking me to uh, at about 12 inches to put the bowl curve in. So because we've been ribbing, double ribbing, we need to moisten the exterior because I'm going to use my right hand to support the exterior of the bowl as I put the curve in. And on the inside, uh, I'm going to use the rib to come downward and inward and press the curve into the bowl. At four o'clock, if this is three o'clock, I'm starting at four. And the motion of the rib, I'll get my head out of the way, is going to come downward and inward with the leading edge down here pressing pretty hard as I get into the lower bit and I'm going to swing this way and then finish up coming this way. So it took me a while to realize that's the best motion for working with the ribs and the downward curve. If you start here and head down and in, you will end up with weird spots that don't quite touch the rib. But if you come down this way below the three o'clock line, more like four o'clock and finishing up this way, it tends to work really well. So here I go, press it, the clay against the rib. I'm compressing with my outside hand. I'm heading down, my fingertips are stretching on the outside all the way under. Pressing really hard now, down against this bowl. My uh, pot was a little dry there, so I'm gonna moisten this. One more time, down and in. Almost have it. Now I have the jacuzzi seat. So let's press that up and out. You need more support underneath if you have the jacuzzi seat there. So that's when it changes the form, like a flat surface and then up, I'm guessing. That's looking pretty good, actually. So yeah, it's a continuous curve. That's the important part. Okay, so I think that's okay. So this is gonna be tricky because I don't have the same um, tool. So I'm gonna try something like this. The only thing is with the corner, it might get caught. Um, so moisten the outside. Maybe a little bit on the inside. Just so there's no dry spot. So I can tell with my pot right now there's a little bit of a, the curve is not smooth. So from this point onward, it goes out too far. So I guess when I'm pressing down, that's kind of what I want to press down on to join this curve and then inwards. So support on the outside. You start from the very top and then push down on this curve where it's not 
continuing. And then one thing I didn't do properly was the positioning. So he mentioned not doing it at three o'clock or four o'clock and I did it at three. So let's start again. This time it's hard. I think I'll just start from there. So that's, that's good. And so this part pushing down quite hard and then I'm gonna keep going and flatten out. I think that's not bad. So it's a lot nice, actually that's really a lot nicer up here. The middle still needs some work. I, I don't think I've went in enough. My bow's also a bit more shallow comparing to his. So let's do that again. But I don't think I can really fix that now. Um, so I'm just gonna roll with it. So pushing really hard down here. All the way to the middle. So that's helped, but the ribs kind of created this line here. So I need to smooth that out again. But I actually, I really like this technique. Because um, it's giving me a really nice shape. Yeah, I don't think this is the exact rip for it. Because the shape of this is a little bit different. I'm just going to use two hands. Yeah, I think the curve on this rib is too harsh or like too aggressive. So there's still this, this area here. Maybe, maybe this would actually be a better shape. So, that's pretty good. Like the shape is definitely changing. It's become a wider and wider bowl. Uh, so in that sense, it's not exactly right. I think, it, again, it needs to be taller. Uh, the issue, I'll kind of go back to this, is when I opened it up and pulled the wall, I didn't pull it tall enough, basically that's what it is. That looks okay to me. Wow. It's pretty smooth. Um, so that is the first bowl. So I might take my hard blue rib and I'm gonna put it just below the rim and Slowly press the clay downward and outward over the profile of the rib. Alright, so I think he's just finishing up. So I think I'll, I'll also do this part where he basically fold out the rim a touch. I talked about using the corner of the rib for consistency. I just need a bit of moisture on the inside. Especially seeing how wide this bow is, I think it, it suits having a bit of a rolled out um, rim. But it's fairly smooth. It's probably one of the better wide bow I've made. Um, so I think that tutorial is definitely really, really helpful. Um, let's clean this up and wide it off. So if I was going to do this again, I would definitely make it a bit taller instead of this wide. Um, this is actually the wide right um, width because this is almost exactly the same as the, the bat. So this is 12 inches, but it just needs to be higher so I can get more of a curve. Um, right now it's for, it's quite shallow. I think the tutorials, but like what Dan is trying to show is a deeper bowl, which I have kind of lost that height. If I can do this exact same thing, to just get like an other couple of centimeters or like an inch, I think that'll feel a lot better. Um, and I think that would be more like what the demonstration was intended for. So two and a half kilo. 
bowl. Um, yeah, definitely on the shallow side. Because if the if the wall came up a bit taller, it could be more. So that I, I think the shape is right. It just needs to follow the curve and then just come up about that much more. Then it'll be right. Like this is more of a surfing bowl, which like I really I really like it. I think it could be a bit thinner, and I think that's where the height was lost. Like the wall could have been uh, thinner, especially around the the like the bottom here. I feel like it's quite thick. Highly recommend that tutorial if you are interested in making larger bowls. Um, doing a step-by-step -step like that I find quite useful. Obviously I'm going to do this a few more times to get the hang of it. But even for the first time following the tutorial, the result is pretty good. Highly recommend check it out. So again, it's um, Orchard Valley Pottery Guild or Ceramics Guild. I'll link in the um, description. And that was a demonstration by Dan Derma. And I really enjoy that. So I'll do more videos like this and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Hmm, big boy.